What is going on YouTube? This is Jet back with another video. And in this video, I am in a 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4XE Rubicon. Very cool car. And one other thing that I have to note is the car has 11 miles on it. That means I am the first person to review this car. So without further ado, let's get into the intro. So taking a look at this beautiful steering wheel, as you can see, you got your blue stitching all the way throughout. And then in the middle, you got your very nice Jeep logo. Looks like a new steering wheel for 2024. And on your left-hand side, you have your menu control buttons right here. You're okay to okay anything on this menu right here. Call answer and call decline button. Siri button right here. On the right-hand side, you have your distance keep control. If you wanna get farther away or closer, Cruise control right here. Cruise control settings right here. So if you want to set it, you can go faster, slower, cancel, restore, and cruise control. Well, since this is the 4xE, if you go to the left-hand side of the steering wheel and underneath, as you can see, you do have your lights, which is going to be standard on all your Wranglers. Also, your dome lights in here, if you want it brighter or dimmer, that also will control the lights for your screens in here, which we'll get to later. But underneath the light settings, as you can see, this is where it gets a little bit different. You have your you have your gas cap open right here, your hybrid button right here, electric button right here, and e-save. So hybrid will drive gas and electric. Electric will drive on just electric. And e-save will help you save all your electric charge in case you don't want to use it all in one trip. And then moving behind the steering wheel, as you can see, you have your turn signal indicators right here and your brights if you move them forward and back. And on your right-hand side of the steering wheel are all of your windshield wiper controls right here. And then back to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, next to the lights, you have all your mirror adjustments right here. Very simple, very easy. And then all you have on your door is just your unlock and your lock button, and then your door latch, very simple. Now taking a look at the gauges while they are off, as you can see, you do have an RPM gauge right here, your tachometer, and then you have a power gauge right here and a charge gauge. So it'll tell you how much power you're using while you drive. I don't really understand what that's measured in. Like you have 25 power, 50 power, whatever. I, I don't really understand that. But then if you don't um, put your foot on the gas and you let your car slow down by itself, you will help charge the battery. And speaking of batteries, this is your battery indicator right here. So when this button is, when this light is blinking, that's when you know the car is charging. And as you can see, we are charging at a charge point charger right now. Also, you have just a little bit of what looks like vents, but it doesn't go through to nothing. It's just for show. And then you have what looks like where you would put your key or you know, anything that's somewhat small, you could fit right there. Obviously up here you have, hello, right here you have your mirror, you have your assist button and SOS button, assist button and SOS button right up here. And that's about it for up here. But if you go underneath, you have your brand new, huge wide rectangle screen. Now, Jeep Wranglers have never had rectangle screens. This is pretty new. Now, some might argue that their old screens were rectangles. Well, I beg to differ. They were more squares. This one is more of a rectangle. They were a lot smaller. They took up only like half of this. It's pretty ridiculous how much bigger this has gotten. And in a little bit, we will show you how it looks. Underneath the screen, you have your air vents, which are very nice, very simple, very easy to use, just up and down like so. And then underneath all of that, as you can see, you have your volume knob right here your push to start button to the left of that, and then all your climate controls right here. So your front to frost, rear to frost, hotter, colder, hotter, colder, climate control, whether how, how fast you want the fan to blow on you. You have all your modes here. So whether you want to hit your face, legs, windshield, whatever, you can do it. Recirculate the air and AC, and your tuning knob to the right of that. Very nice, very simple. And underneath all of that, you have your mute button right here, your battery 
charge recycle right here. I think that's what that is. Traction control off here, hazard control. And if my commenters can let me know what, what this button is, I would be very appreciative. And your screen off button is to the right of that. Underneath all of that is where it gets a little bit different than most cars. Now this is where you control your window. So if you want your window to go up, you click pull up like so. And if you want your window to go down, push down like so. Jeep, Jeep Wranglers have been doing this for a while. It's definitely nothing new if you're a Wrangler fan, but if you are new to Wranglers, then this is very new. Your 12 volt DC charger right here, aux port, which is pretty unheard of for 2024 cars with a USB-C and a USB-A charger right in here. And you can close that if you wanted to, but since you have your chargers in there, you can't close it all the way. And right here, you have your rear differential lock and your front differential lock, off-road plus and sway bar, and all your auxiliary buttons. Don't really know what all these aux buttons do, you can click them, they'll light up when the car is on, but it doesn't really make sense to me. My commenters can let me know what that does also. I'd be appreciative. And also, if you are new to Wranglers, as you can see, you have two, what you would think are two shifters, but this just controls if you're in two high, four high, auto, four high, part-time, and is for neutral while you're in park. It's for the people that flat tow their, their Jeeps. Shame on you if you do that. And uh, four low, very simple. Obviously this is your shifter with your old school Wrangler logo. Please uh, excuse all my garbage. I basically live in this car while I work in it and all the other garbage. But as you can see, you obviously your shifter and then manual mode would be if you go all the way down and to the left, that will get you into manual mode. And then you just have two cup holders fit very nicely, a little phone slot right there and then your e-brake is right here. It's still a manual e-brake, so very nice. You don't see that too much anymore. Everything's electronic e-brake now. You can look at the center console. As you can see, oh, you open it up and you have a little bit of storage on top, but you can open it up again and that'll give you way more storage underneath. And you have another USB-A charger and uh, another port. So if you wanna plug another phone into your screen, you can go ahead and do so. Other than that, that's all you get. Plenty of storage though. As you can see, the seats are pretty cool. They have a pretty neat little design on the bottom. They're like triangles, but not quite. And then you got your nice Rubicon logo right here. Now, if you were to go for the higher end Rubicon, you can have leather seats. And that's pretty much all the difference I saw in, in the whole entire thing. That's pretty much the whole entire difference. As you can see on your dash, it is completely leather wrapped. It, is a very nice texture. It feels very premium with your blue stitching all throughout. Very, very Jeep-like. All Jeeps always have is you have your little holding bar, your oh shit bar right here. So very cool. And then you have another thing to hold on to right there. And someone that I was talking to that also owns a Wrangler told me that when you open up the, the roof and you take this off, you usually have to, you know, use your torque wrench to get this open. But for these ones, for the 2024 model, all you have to do is just twist them, close that down, open that like so. We'll go to this side and open like so. And then we'll go right here, open like so. And then you can literally just open the roof. Simple as that. Now let's turn the car on. Very nice, and as you can see, I have 10% charge, which gives me about three miles of range in my charge. I only have around a quarter tank, which is around 77 miles if I was only driving on gas, which is pretty horrific. And as you can see, obviously, I drove the car from 11 to 178, and I'm gonna put around 100 to 150 more miles on it. And as you can see, when you're plugged in and charging, it does let you know. You have a little charging indicator right here and it says plugged in and charging and it tells you your charging percentage right there. And as you can see, my average, if I don't have charge is 14.9 miles per gallon. Pretty horrific. That is worse than majority of cars out there. So do with that as you will. 
taking a look at the Apple CarPlay screen, if you just click that open, it is just absolutely beautiful. Scrolls very nicely. I didn't even know they have an MLB app. I wonder if we could watch them MLB. Nope, we can only uh, listen to it, but still very, very cool. And then you got your charge point app right here. So this will tell you all of your charging locations if you have anything next to you, which it's not telling me anything near me. But, oh, there you go. There's the one I'm at right now. And then you got plenty more. So taking a look at the outside of the car, as you can see, it is just absolutely gorgeous. This is a very nice looking Jeep. The new Rubicon little design right here compared to the old one is a lot nicer. And as you can see, we can rip off all the old tape that was left from the factory. And as you can see, you got a little bit of tape up here as well. Let's go ahead and rip that off together. Now, as you can see, we ripped it off together and we're looking at the driver's side, which obviously you can charge on, and that green indicator means that you are charging. Now let's take a look to the, let's take a walk to the back here. And as you can see, you got your 4xE logo right here, or your 4XE, whatever you wanna call it. You got it right there, very, very pretty. Nice new tail lights very pretty that's really all i have to say about this car is it's very nice it, it looks good great color cool rims as you can see i'm gonna get lower on the i should say cool wheels as you can see i'm gonna get low here and you got your jeep logo or your little jeep but it's in blue obviously since this is a brand new car you got beautiful brand new looking brakes very clean with very clean looking rotors the size of these wheels coming from the factory, you have LT285 70R17s, so 17 inch rims that are very, very pretty. The brand you're looking at is obviously a BF Goodrich, and they are all-terrain tires and they have what is this ko2 ta ko2 and then walking through as you can see you got your nice lit up blue jeep wrangler logo right here it just looks absolutely gorgeous and on top trail rated four by four and then just a quick look at the grill which is obviously very standard typical jeep and then as you can see on the hood here, you have some functional air vents that actually do go all the way through. So that's nice, they're not fake. You got your 4 by e logo right here. It's a sticker. This is the actual paint and then the rest is a sticker. So the 4 by e underneath that, that is the actual paint. So would I recommend this car? Kind of. And the reason I say that is because this car is just not an everyday driver. That's all I can really say. It, it's all over the road when you drive, which I am not a fan of. Any Jeep owner that tells you that they're smooth, that they're quiet when you drive, you don't hear the wind, they're an absolute liar. These cars are loud, noisy, all over the place. I'm not a fan of that. But if you're going to use this car... If you're gonna use this car to off-road or just daily on, uh, you know, just a short drives, fantastic for you. But if you're driving this car on a highway, absolutely horrific. I would never ever recommend this car for highway driving, long drives. It is so uncomfortable. The seats only go back so far. It's not very far at all. Just not very good. Obviously, Rubicons are extremely capable cars for off-roading. 
overlanding, which is extremely popular nowadays. They're just very, very capable cars, even stock. You don't really need to do too much to them when you get them off the lot to, you know, take them overlanding or even off-roading. <laughs> but if you're not using this car to take off-road, then I really don't think that you should be even thinking about this car. It's, it's just not comfortable. It's, I mean, it, it, it has some luxuries in it, but it's, it's, it's not, not all there. And this is an off-roader. If you don't buy the, if you buy this and you don't take it off-road, <laughs> that's all I really have to say about the car. Really, the charging is pretty awesome. That's one of the biggest perks about driving the the four by e. But if you were just to have the regular Rubicon, which I don't even know if they make those anymore, um, that then I really don't think that they're really all that. They're they're. they're... <laughs> if you agree with me, make sure you subscribe down below and make sure you comment down below as well. Anything else that you want to see, please let me know. I am all for opinions and make sure you stay for the end because I have some hand-selected music that I- <laughs>